Welcome to Everyone's a Millionaire podcast, where we explore the world of wealth and finance and provide insights and inspiration to help you achieve your financial goals. Do you ever dream of becoming a millionaire but don't know where to start? Or perhaps you're already on your way to accumulating significant wealth but want to learn more about the strategies and habits of other successful millionaires. In this podcast, we'll bring you interviews with successful entrepreneurs, investors, and financial experts, as well as research-based insights and practical tips to help you build and grow your wealth. We'll cover topics such as how to invest in stocks, real estate, and other assets, how to manage debt and save for retirement, and how to build a mindset for financial success. Whether you're just starting out on your financial journey or you're a seasoned investor already looking for new insights and ideas, Everyone's a Millionaire is the podcast for you. So sit back, relax, and join us as we explore the fascinating world of wealth and finance. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Everyone's a Millionaire. I am your host, David Dodge. Today, I am joined by Dylan Osman. He is from Mountain Home, Arkansas. Dylan, what's up, buddy? All right. What's up, man? How are you doing? I'm doing awesome, man. Thanks for being here. I'm grateful for your time. I'm grateful for your knowledge. And I'm just really happy to have you on the show, Dylan. This is a really straightforward show. Um, yep. I'm going to ask about nine or 10 questions and it's short episodes. So we're yep. going to have some fun. You ready to roll? I'm ready, man. All right, Dylan, tell the audience a little bit about yourself, who you are and you know what's your background. Yeah, man. I am uh, 26. I'm based out of Mountain Home, Arkansas, which is a super small town right in the middle up north and uh, been buying real estate since 2020, right? Right since COVID started. So I guess that's what, four years now. Yeah. I've been doing it full time for about two. So about half of that. And uh, today I'm sitting at about 124 units. Part of that's owned with partners. Uh, I flip, I've probably done 20 to 30, well, about 20 flips to date since I've started investing. Uh, but that's really ramped up in the last year. So I'll probably end the year with 10 or, 10 or so flips. Uh, I've wholesaled a couple of deals. So I've kind of seen the full gamut, but man, just loving it. Keep, keep, keeping buying stuff. I've got employees now and kind of learning that season of life and trying to scale up, be to your level, man. Man, I love it. You're doing great. You've only been in the game a couple of years and you already yeah. have over a hundred units. That's amazing. Yeah. Keep it up, man. So real estate's your main, it's your main, uh, main gig at this point it's a main gig i still play the guitar a little bit but i'm gonna stick to real estate so man i love it all right cool so what specific actions or decisions did you take that significantly trip contributed to achieving a net worth in excess of a million so like you know what what things did you essentially take to to get to one million plus right well obviously real estate but more like uh i guess defining that out I, at one point, I joined a mentorship, Henry Washington, and he taught me how to find great deals. And so I, I dove into the world of marketing and finding off-market deals. And I'm sure that's probably similar to you, right? You, you're really good at finding off-market properties. But you know, you can build wealth really, really fast when you're buying stuff 30%, 40% off of, of market value. And I started in 2020, which was at the time, the craziest real estate market ever, but here we are at 2024 and it's even more expensive now. So, you know, I was buying deals all those years and uh, I was buying them at a discount then. And then even today they're worth more than they are. Uh, on top of that, I bought a lot of value add deals that I've done a lot of the value add work on. So meaning like I bought an apartment complex and it wasn't performing right. And since then we've pushed rents. We've, we've done a lot of things to improve the value of that property, even over a year. So it really pushes your net worth up quick. 100%, man. I love it. Real yeah. estate's definitely the key. That's what I've used to, to get to my net worth over a million, several million at this point. Um, you know, I think that it's probably the easiest way to do it. 100%. And, you know, whenever I talk to people and they're like, oh, I don't know what I want to do. I, I always just say, well, you should at least consider real estate because, yeah. you know, we've all heard the old saying nine out of 10 millionaires, you know, have either use real estate directly or indirectly to amass their wealth. And, you know, my rebuttal to that is, is why would you try to do it any other way? 
I, I don't like know. Nine out of 10 people go down the <laughs> road that has success. Why would you choose the one? Like, I don't know. To me, that just yeah. doesn't make sense. So yeah. And like even comparing real estate to businesses, you know, I, I talk to a lot of people a lot smarter than me and they say like real, real estate is a business first off, but like out of all the businesses you could start or try to be successful at real estate is by far the most forgiving and like the easiest to run. And I, I agree with that. hundred percent it is. Yeah. hundred percent, man. Absolutely. All right. Let's go on to number two, Dylan. What, this is a good question. What's your biggest financial mistake or setback and how did you recover from it? Oh, I, I almost hate saying this because I don't want my partnerships to feel like um, they're not appreciated or, or whatever. I did a lot of partnerships early on, which is fine. Totally fine. Looking back, like, or, or maybe where I'm at now is I value partnerships uh, or my appetite for partnerships is a lot less. So early on, I did what I had to do to get a deal done, which is fine. Um, I don't regret those partnerships, don't regret those people at all. But I wouldn't do deals now the same way I did three years ago because I have more tools in my belt. You could say I have more money now to take down deals, but really I just, I'm smarter now than I was three years ago. I know how to take down a deal without giving away equity. So I didn't lose any money, but I left a lot of equity or cash flow on the table, you know, in those moments on some of those deals. Um, I don't know if it's a regret, man, because, you know, I'm, I'm where I'm at now, but, uh, you know, just, I don't know if you kind of had similar scenarios with, with partnerships or just understanding that dynamic, but you change over time as an investor and how you want to buy things. Yeah. So, so you would say just really choosing your partnerships wisely. Or choosing you know, how I take down the deals. Maybe I wouldn't have done partnerships at all at that time. Okay. Sure. Um, I would say that, but, you know, shiny object syndrome too, I would say this is one of the mistakes maybe I made is, you know, it's so many ways to make money in real estate, which you know as well. But like when you're in a small town, you don't have only multifamily to focus on. So you kind of have to be okay with what comes across your plate as long as you're buying good deals. So I bought a resort last year and it's been a great deal. I love it. But a resort is short term and short to be a good short term rental owner is a very different skill set than to be a good multifamily operator, right? And I don't regret the resort, but it has been a ton of legwork. It's taken a ton of time off of my focus from like going to buy other things. So I think just looking back, I should have focused in a little more on what I would want to do. And I really, I'm even saying that to myself now, because I should still do it now, but just really focusing in on one asset strategy, you know, I think that will help a lot of people out in the long run. No, that makes perfect sense. Tell me a little bit more about the resort. Man, it's, it's stupid. I, I had a house lead on a house that was across the street from this resort. And I was kind of looking on my deal machine app, you know, and I clicked across the street at this property and I saw it was a big resort and it only sold a year prior or two years prior in like 2020, 2019, but it sold at a super low price, like 140, 150. And I could tell what just from Google Maps. Like that, I don't huh? mean to interrupt you. I don't mean to interrupt you, but I'm so just good. so curious. What do you mean by resort? Like uh, lake this. resort. So I live by two lakes. So it's okay. it's a uh, it's a lake resort right up from the lake. Okay. It doesn't have so a dock or anything. Property then? No, nah, you you can see the lake, but it's not on the lake. Okay, that's just how sure. our lakes are set up. But it's got sure. cabins, it's got motel units, and it's got two houses. It's fourteen units. Okay. Um. So anyway, I, I saw this thing. It sold for a really low price, and you can call it luck, whatever. You can call it fate. But I called the owner of it and I was like, hey, do you want to sell? It was just a general out of the blue cold call. And she happened to say, yes, we actually do want to sell. So I went there the next day. I met with them, talked to the whole resort. And a month later or three weeks later, we had a contract. So, you know, I, I, I think when I bought that resort, just to kind of give you some, some bragging rights here, I guess, she had made like 86, 87,000 on that resort uh, in 2022. And I bought it in May of 23. And from May to December, I grossed 111,000. So I increased the income substantially and with less months. So I think this year will be more around 120, 130. Uh, and the resort's probably worth seven, 800, maybe 900 now. And I've put about 120 into it. So yeah, I mean, it's been a lot of legwork though. It's, it's not been, uh, it hasn't come easy. That's for sure. Yeah, I have, I'm sure. I'm sure. Awesome, man. Very cool. Very, very yeah. cool. All right, next question here. Can you share some specific strategies or tactics? And you kind of already have, but mm -hmm. what specific strategies or tactics would you would you um, say that you have used to not only increase your income, but also your savings rate? Okay, tactics. Well, so 
I don't know if marketing counts as a tactic, but finding great deals is the bread and butter of saving your butt in bad situations. Like I can make Amen. mistakes. You're going to make mistakes. Uh, to give you an example, I bought a mobile home park earlier this year and we didn't do our septic due diligence like I should have. And the seller lied about a septic tank being bad. So that was a $4,000 learning lesson, but it's not the end of the world because- That's a cheap lesson. <laughs> I bought a $150,000 mobile home park that I think is worth- you know, probably 250 to 300 as is. And like, mm -hmm. you know, market rent gross is 6,000 a month. Like it's a great freaking deal. Like I love the deal from the get go. So yeah, I made a mistake, but that equity and that good deal that I bought saved me. If I paid $300,000 for that part, and let's call it a $10,000 mistake, like that $10,000 mistake would have freaking hurt because I'm already paying too much for it, you know? So equity saved my butt more times than I can count. So, and I get that from finding great deals. Second is private lenders have been really instrumental for me. Um, like when I'm buying a single family rental, I can buy it cash, quote unquote, with a private lender and then instantly refinance that full amount of that, that full amount out from a, from a velocity of money standpoint, that has helped me a lot because I can totally. get access to that equity really quick. Whereas I see other people, you know, they'll take it down, they'll put 20% down with a bank and, you know, they may have to wait six months to access it or, they, they just, when, when your bank is sitting there and they kind of have like the control over the deal, it, it, it makes it a lot harder to access that capital if you want to. So. Amen. I agree with both of those a hundred percent, man. Yeah. Marketing, the ability to find deals uh, kind of go hand in hand. And then of course the access to private lenders and, and instant capital. Yeah. Um, has, I, I, I would, uh, t you know, say that that's been a big part of my success as well too. Those two things. So great answer, yeah. man. Great answer. All right. Number four, how do you balance risk and reward or risk versus reward? You know, when you're making your investment decisions. Yeah. I, um, I talked about this a little bit on the VP podcast, but the, um, has, so liquidity, I'm looking at like liquidity in the bank right now more than I ever have because, and you know, this, when you're scaling a rental portfolio, I don't care. Even if you're buying 30% discount, like I just mentioned, you run into cash crunches. You absolutely run into cash crunches. And there was moments when I was scaling between like 30, 40, 50, 60 units. You know, I'd be buying stuff and I'd have like $3,000 in my bank account, which is freaking risky because you got millions of dollars worth of property and like an HVAC goes out or a roof goes bad, like you're screwed. You know, I'd say I'd got through a lot of those months with luck, but as far as risk and reward, where I'm sitting now is just making sure I have enough liquid cash in the bank that makes me just feel better. Like I've realized looking back, if I have high debt and high liquidity, I sleep 20 times better than I do if I have no debt, but no liquidity, like low liquidity. So yep. I would yep. rather have that debt. I'd rather have a hundred K sit in the bank account and I sleep like a baby. But I was just going to say, I usually keep six, six figures as a reserve at this point. Yeah. Yeah. Gotta, because, you know, you could spend yeah. six figures in two weeks if you had a bunch of shit happen. I mean, yeah, it goes quick. Yeah. So, and I've got, awesome I've got answer. payroll now. So, I mean, I've started hiring employees. I mean, I've got, you know, four or five grand going out a week in payroll. Yep. And, you know, that 100K of bank account, it's just, that's my payroll bank account. And it just, it just helps you sleep better, man. I don't, I don't want to get so low that I'm, you know, pulling off a project because I run out of rehab money on it or something like that. It's just, I've been there recently. Yep. I just don't want to do it anymore. <laughs> I'm with you, brother. I'm with you. All right. Good answers, man. Good answers. This is good. Good stuff here. All right. Number five, looking back, what advice would you give your younger self mm. about managing money and building wealth? And you're already young, my friend, but you know, what would you give? How old are you again? 26. 26. What would you tell the 20 year old you, man? I would say focus on what you're good at. Uh, some of those early years, man, I try to do everything myself. It, and, and that's not bad because everybody does that. In the you got to learn. Totally. But on that first project, I literally was trying to do the construction side of it. And I just freaking hated it. I freaking hated it. Like if that was real estate, I didn't want it. So I know finding deals is my bread and butter. And even in the last six months, I've learned that like, hey, I'm spending $100,000 a year on construction anyway. Why don't we have them in-house where I can control it? Hey, I'm paying a manager, you know, this much money every year anyway. Why don't I just hire somebody? And like, it's off my plate a little bit. And managing people is still work, believe you me. But like, I've enjoyed this season of focusing on what I'm good at and having my team like handle the rest of it. And, you know, they're still learning. I'm still learning too, but 
yeah, that's, you know, focus on what you're good at and then think bigger really quick. And everybody says that I'm, you probably agree with that. Like everybody who talks to their younger self is think bigger, quicker. Uh, I, I didn't start buying really large commercial assets until I joined a group of investors in capitalist cartel. And it was surrounded with people who own 400, 500, 600 units. Like that made me think really big, really quick. It's not crazy at all. Yeah, no, that's a great answer, man. I, I, I love the part about think bigger, quicker. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, that's something I wish that I could definitely have taught myself a long time ago. Yeah. Uh, so, but awesome answers all around. Uh, two more questions for you, brother, and then we're, we're wrapping it up. All right. Um, what advice, and you've already given us some really, really good feedback, some good knowledge bombs here, some really, really good stuff here, but what advice would you give the audience um, which is going to mostly be consisting of those who are on their way. They're they're starting their journey. They they do not have a million dollar net worth or multi million dollar net worth yet. You know what advice would you give them? And it doesn't even have to be real estate related per se. But what right. advice would you give them to help speed up that process for them? Well, I hate going back to it, but that marketing number one, um, and then. I would say just understand that this is going to be a hard journey. Okay. Like sometimes I think I needed to hear that. I still need to hear it every once in a while. This is not easy. Like there's a lot of people who call this really easy and they sit on their yacht, yada, yada, yada with all this money. This is freaking difficult. You'll have a lot of sleepless nights, like a lot of stress sitting on your chest. So just know that you're going to go through the journey. You're going to come into cash crunches. So you need to learn how to raise capital. You need to learn how to find deals. Um, and you just need to know that this is not going to be an easy journey. Like if you think it's going to be easy right now, you might as well quit because it's not. Uh, you're going to have to learn how to overcome problems, whether it's a banker telling you no, whether it's no deals coming through your pipeline, whether it's tenants trashing a property and giving you a $10,000 unexpected bill, it's going to be difficult. <laughs> yep. So just accept it. I love it. And I agree with that 100%. And I think the the way that I would build on that um, is to say, pick your hard, right? Yeah. You know, like, do you want to work hard and deal with problems and stresses now? So later you don't have to, or do you want to be lazy and not deal with anything, but always yeah. have a hard life and never yeah, be able I love to that. get ahead and never be able to like go travel Europe for three months at a time and buy airplanes yep. and yachts and whatever it is that you fancy. Cause I plan on owning a plane. I've owned one. I already have owned one. I'm going to own another one. I plan on owning a big ass sailboat and oh, yeah. I already take a vacation every six or eight weeks already. Right. Yeah. So I want to be able to keep doing those things. Pick your hard. Yeah. This isn't about me guys. I'm, I'm, you know, given a, a, a layer on top of, of what, you know, what Dylan's saying here. So yeah, what, a, what a great piece of advice there. Well, Dylan, last but not least, my friend, um, you know, what's a good contact method for you um, you know, if somebody wanted to connect with you, they wanted to, you know, learn from you, partner with you, hire you as a mentor or a coach to them, you know, mm -hmm. do you have social handles, emails, phone numbers, websites, what, I mean, lay it out there Got it uh, all, man. by all means, don't hold back. What's a good way for people to connect with you and, or learn more about you and how you could essentially, yeah. you know, help them. Yeah, man. Uh, so email is Dylan at OsmanProperties.com. Simple enough. Instagram handle is Dylan underscore Osman. Facebook is Dylan Osman. I don't know if there is there like Facebook tags or you just say the name. I don't know. Yeah, really it's forward slash and then the, the tag. Yeah. yeah. So like that. So uh, Dylan Osman for Facebook. I gave you my email. Uh, honestly, if you email me and you want to chat, I'll give you my cell. We can just talk. Currently, I don't really have a education group per se. Uh I did just get done mentoring my first like one-on-one -on -one student and that was really fun. So I think I'm open to education, but it's going to be very case by case. Uh, you know, I want to teach people who really fit what I see, you know, or maybe not what I see, but just, I want to coach people who who's going to mesh well and actually put in the work. So I'd say I'll offer some one-on-one -on -one coaching. I'm not blowing it up or marketing it or anything that hard, but maybe one day I will. Yeah, absolutely. And man. shameless plug, I'm looking for more private lenders. Aren't we all? So yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. And you know, you're going to get a little bit of everything over the years from doing yeah. podcasts like this and putting yourself out there. Um, so I love it, man. So just for those who are like driving down the highway right now, listen to this podcast. It's Dylan Osmond, D-Y-L-A-N-O-S-M-O-N. 
Yep. So what was that email one more time, Dylan? It is Dylan at osmondproperties.com. Awesome. And I would imagine email. you I'd could like also to... go to osmondproperties.com to learn a little you bit can. more about you as well, too. Okay. Well, you, you kind of can. It's just my rental website, but you'll see a phone number on there. So give it a buzz. Man, I, I guess I need to work on my contact on info, man. Add a bio up on there, brother. <laughs> yeah, I know. I need to. I, man, that's the stuff I just don't find time for. I just don't do it. I need to. I hear you. I hear you. Well, Dylan, it's been a pleasure having you on the show. I, uh, I'm so grateful, like I said in the beginning of the episode, to get this opportunity to spend some time with you, get to know you, network with you, um, ask you questions that not only I find value in, but I know the audience, the listeners, the viewers are going to find value in. You know, we are the one in the 17 at this point, and this podcast is hosted by the one for the 17. Yep. That's the purpose of everyone is a millionaire. Everybody on the show here is a millionaire. So again, thank you for being here. I'm grateful for your time. And guys, check him out. Go send him an email. Check him out on socials. This this guy is, you know, a go getter. He's a young guy, and he knows what to do and how to get to where you want to be wealthy quickly. So I would definitely recommend reaching out if he resonated with you. And there might be some opportunities to work with him, partner with him, maybe even be coached or mentored by him. So Dylan. Thank you. Signing Thank off. Thank you, man. Buddy. See ya. And that's a wrap for today's episode of Everyone's a Millionaire. We hope you've enjoyed our discussion and that you've gained some valuable insights and ideas to help you build and grow your own wealth. We want to thank our guests for sharing their knowledge and expertise with us today. And we also want to thank you, our listeners, for tuning in and joining us on this journey of financial discovery. If you've enjoyed today's episode, be sure to subscribe to our podcast, leave us a rating and a review on your favorite podcast platform. And if you have any questions or feedback, please feel free to reach out to us on our website or on social media. Remember, at Everyone's a Millionaire, we believe that wealth is within reach for everyone. And we're here to help you achieve your financial goals. So until next time, keep hustling, keep learning and keep building your wealth. Signing off.